What's up, everybody? How's it going today? I was going to talk a little bit about uh, oh self-sufficiency. I think that, uh, you know, I made a video last night where I kind of talked about this, and I didn't end up uploading it because I just rambled on about this and that, as usual. But in a nutshell, I wanted to kind of nail down um, a point I was thinking about that while we want to be self-sufficient and we want to be able to take care of ourselves, there's also an aspect to society which <laughs> I guess is the root of, you know, the idea of a society or a community, community, communing, working together. And we're trying to somehow separate from that. We created communities to come together to work towards these end goals of having more, uh, better crops, we found that working as teams was always better. Hunting in groups was always more successful. And then we got to the point where we are in this Western world where um, we're ready to just let everything go now. Like, okay, well, I don't need anybody's help anymore. I'm self-sufficient. Not realizing that the very system that we're part of, the place we go to get our paycheck, the, the company that we work for, or whether we work for ourselves through using various means of sales, uh, we're all part of it. Very few people are just uh, living off the land and bartering. And so we're kind of forced to be part of it all. And being self-sufficient doesn't mean that you have to be completely locked away in an isolated area. I guess what popped this into my head is this funky little rug thing I'm wearing on my head. You're probably like, what the hell is that hat? Um, <laughs> I made it last night out of some scraps of silk. I worked for this uh, this rich guy for a while working on his house, and he used to... He was like a designer, and he'd buy all these crazy, like, uh, silk pieces of cloth to try out for furniture and whatnot, and he'd just throw them away. So, I have all these pieces sitting around, and last night I put a new needle on the sewing machine that was broken, and so I cut a little circular piece to sew on the top, and I sewed this thing together. It's a very simple, simple hat. Um, it's a little pattern along the edge there, that darker pattern. That was just my experiment with the sewing machine, trying to sew a pattern. It's actually a uh, pattern here on the inside. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. <laughs> there we go. You can see that. It looks kind of like a Mayan type design or something all the way around. And since I had uh, my bobbin had a dark thread and my other one had a light thread, then I ended up with the same pattern on the outside. You can see it now on the bottom below the dark stuff, but it's light. Anyhow, I was experimenting and playing around and just having some fun with it. And uh, it really kind of inspired me. I was thinking, you know, I'd love to make my own. I'd love to make my own clothes. I know this hat is tacky and crappy as hell. I don't care. It was more just for using the materials I had to try to kind of come up with my own. I my own. Uh, I don't know. Get into the groove of it again because it's been a while. And I was thinking, you know, I'd really love to make my own clothing line. Maybe you know, even uh, just something simple, not like. <laughs> you know, uh, anything fancy, definitely not on the aspect of being stylish. Um, but all the different things I do are partly because they're artistic and I love doing them, but partly because I love being self-sufficient. I love it when I have something that needs fixing that I can fix myself. As a carpenter, that's a very useful trade for me. And I think that if I learned how to work with metal, with sewing, with wood, with all these different, you know, materials, we can we can all become a little more self-sufficient. And it may sound trivial, but can you imagine if everybody out there was actually making their own clothes? I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but is it really? It's not, of course. Sewing is not a difficult thing. It's just, it's much easier and cheaper to go out and just buy a shirt from China. But then we're buying into the you know, uh, the globalization that we're also opposed to. It's like we're tied in to all this junk that we're told to buy. And I'm not, you know, of course I buy clothes too. I try to shop at Goodwill, you know, to buy used clothes. I guess I just, um, I'm really trying not to be part of the economy any more than I have to. Buying the things that I need to do and trying to create the things that I can on my own. You know, it's hard. We see people working as hard as they can and having nothing, and others can barely work at all and have a fortune. Um, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> as an individual, the only way we can try to do better is to be as self-sufficient as we can. And it's very rewarding, actually, making your own things. It doesn't matter how cheesy it is. 
even if you make your your first uh, wood carving, your first walking stick, your first, you know, bench or chair. I have a chair I made a while back. It was my first attempt to make an actual chair without using screws. It was all mortise and tenon, and I bought a bunch of pine and just made it off the top of my head. Like, I didn't use any plans or draw anything out. I just said, okay, I'm going to use this for the legs, this for the back. And now that it's finished, it's a phenomenal chair. And, you know, I love it, you know, and it works really good and it's sturdy. But it'll, even though it's crappy compared to other chairs, it's something I made. And I guess that's what I really wanted to convey. Sometimes something we make or create ourselves can be so much more rewarding than anything we could possibly buy. So, anyway, hope you all are doing fantastic and uh, talk to you all soon.